Welcome people of the World Wide Web. So we're doing the Cineworld Challenge. Hopefully you're coming along for the ride if you're new to it. It's a challenge that Cineworld did earlier this year. They've decided, uh, they did it back May, June. They've decided to push it out to the masses. I missed this one. I've seen other YouTubers do it. So I, I'm jumping, jumping on the bandwagon for September and you're getting a video every day of this. So we are on day seven. So. Day seven is a movie I would love to see on the big screen. Now, as you may or may not know, if you follow this channel, I go to see a lot of movies. Probably, I would say, in the past five, six years, when I live quite close to my local cinema, I have seen probably 90 to 95% of my movies that I've wanted to see out on the big screen. Um, I was very lucky or fortunate, if you'd say, that I was still going through the COVID periods when I could and they put on a lot of older movies. So I got to see a lot of um, movies that were kind of re-released and ones, uh, and even one's different time I went to see, I think in 2015, the Back to the Future 2, because that is, the uh, it was October, I want to say October 4th is when he actually goes back to the future in 2015. Um, and I saw that movie on that day, so it was really nice to kind of relive that because I was too young to have seen the Back to the Future movies. Then I believe I've seen one as well. I saw Jaws a few years ago with my friends, the Karate Kids, um, and a few old classics like Mad Max and stuff like this. Um, so I've seen a lot. But if I could pick any one movie to see on a big screen, and this is where unfortunately I have to go in, this is my first movie that I've had to take from my top five. Um, it is my favorite movie of all time, and it is The Crow. There you go. So people who do or do not know, this is based on a comic book who's based on, or takes elements from the life of James A. Barr, so it is very sad. I know, obviously, it was Brandon Lee's last film. He died during the shooting of this due to a mistake by the studio and one of the prop people. Um, and yeah, this came out in 1994, and it's rated 18. Now, in 1994, I was 12, so obviously nowhere near old enough to go see it at the cinema. Uh, my cinema ha or Cine World have promoted that they would do anniversary versions of this in the past five years. Different years you get listings that they will and then it's never materialised or materialised in a local cinema to me, so I've never seen this film. This is by far my favourite film and to give you some, to give you the reasons why i chosen this one above anything else, even if it's your favourite film, you know, even if, you know, why would I want to see this on the cinema? The reason why I want to see this on the cinema is because it is an epic. It is a film that uses very little CGI and it is the core of the story so to give some explanation that people know the whole point of this story is on Halloween um, Eric Draven which is this and his soon-to-be wife Shelley um, they are in their apartment um, some gang members or four gang members to be precise come in basically torch the place unfortunately rape Shelley and kill her and Eric um, a year to the day, um, Eric returns from the grave, being brought back by a crow who kind of links with him, and it is his kind of mission to get revenge for Shelley's death, and that, and he can only get revenge by killing the people that killed him, and this is the story of him going around um, exacting justice, but still he. He is semi-immortal, but he also reacts to emotions and stuff. So it is him reliving or going to see people who have links to him, but then anybody he touches or stuff, he feels their emotions and shock. And obviously he meets people that went through a lot of stuff through him and Shelley being killed. Um, at its core, it is very sad. Obviously the whole redemption thing is good, but it never brings back Shelley. It kind of brings him to the point where he can go on as we believe to some sort of heaven where he lives with Shelley now the reason why you know you come across stories like this all the time and why do I feel this is more now anybody who doesn't know is James A. Barr who um, wrote the comic for this the reason why the comic exists is because he was in love with his high school sweetheart um, and two weeks before 
they were to get um, go to their prom and obviously leave school. She unfortunately was run down by a drunk driver and killed. So he himself has had to you know live with a terrible loss, um, which is a coincidence in itself. Or, or not a co you'll see a coincidence in itself because obviously a few months before filming was ended and Brandon Lee was to be married to his sweetheart. He unfortunately was killed on set of The Crow. A very lot of coincidences happen. If you have this DVD, if you've watched, or Blu-ray Blu even, because that's what it is, there is a behind the scenes. Uh, it says Brandon Lee's last on screen. And if you watch that, you get a sense of who Brandon Lee is. And from a martial art background, you don't know, sort of, he was very smart, very much like Bruce Lee, his dad. Um, but in this interview, he reminds me a little bit of his mannerism, stuff like Johnny Depp, of how diverse Johnny Depp has been in the past. But also, he quotes a poem, which is my favourite. It's called Shelter in the Sky. And basically, it is how we as people, um, we take life for granted. We think life is an inexhaustible well that basically will keep going and going and then, you know... And we, don't, and we take too much for granted. And this is the Shelter in Sky goes basically, you know, how many times will you see the sunset? How many times will you relive memories? You know, we think it's infinity, but it's actually few times. And, you know, and it just, it just humanizes the whole thing of, you know, that we do take a lot for granted and to appreciate it. And obviously through James O'Barr's own loss uh, and creation of this work, you know, like, yes, there is vengeance, but just to value the things in your life because life isn't forever. And it's just that meaning has always stuck with me from my very early age. Obviously, it'd be early teens when I actually saw this. So I did see this before, I think it was home video or someone had it. Uh, obviously, before I was 18. Um, I'm now 40, so obviously it's been, been with me for over half of my life, if not more. I have the comic book, I believe. I should have the comic book somewhere. Um... Because I've had stuff in alphabetical. Apologies, no one wants to see the back of my head for ages. So yeah, so there is the crow. This is a re-edition of, of it. So there, to even show you know I'm not. And the artwork is really, really good. The story isn't exactly the same as in the film, but I think the film is a very good adaptation. Obviously they did. Obviously, they did do a TV series and a load of film and a um, and a load of films afterwards. I believe there is a has been a remake done, which we'll see what that's like. But yeah, this has been my favourite film and why I would like to see this on the big screen. Apologies, have gone on a bit of a story, but I thought it, this was worth an, an explanation. I've been Cypher Sigma Screen Time. Hope you're enjoying this Cine World Challenge series for September. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with a new challenge, and I'll see you in the next one.